Hello, everybody. Let us move forward and let us start our next presentation. This event of presentations that are part of our uh, Cyberton. And in this presentation, I will talk about some basic ideas of cryptography and steganography. So, first of course, let me of course introduce myself. My name is Vito Tasrujonis. I'm a member of this faculty, faculty which organizing this event. I work a lot with students in this faculty, but today I, of course, will talk not only with students, but I will talk with other people. And when you're talking with people of very, very different backgrounds, uh, talk for you always not easy. Uh, so, because there are a lot of people with, with different backgrounds. In this talk, I will talk only about very basic ideas on which uh, cryptography and steganography are made. If someone wants to hear some very advanced ideas of this, likely you will not hear this. So first of course, we need to introduce some definitions or declarations. So what is steganography and what is cryptography. In principle, if you want to hide your message out of adversaries, if you want that the people that you don't want, that they were able to read your message, there are two principal ways to keep a message out in this way. One of the way is you can conceal the message and hope that the enemy can find it. Enemy may see the message, and and we can see adversary can see everything but your hope your idea is that the adversary people those people that you don't want to be able to read your message seeing your message will not be able to understand that this is the message that carries some specific message and this process this procedure is called steganography Another, another way is, for example, if you have some message and you don't want that this message would be understood and would be uh, read by people you don't want to be able to read this. So you can scramble in this case the message and hope that enemy will be unable to unscramble it. So you have some message, some understandable message, but you somehow will proceed, process this message. The, and you will hope that other people will not be able to unscramble it, to make it understandable again back. And this process is called cryptography. Both ways are used from very, very old times, from ancient times. For example, there are known that one ancient Greek historian, uh, ancient Greek historian Herodotus described a situation how one Greek noble shaved the head of his messenger, wrote the message on this messenger head, because we're talking about very old times, uh, likely that this messenger was slave. So he waited when the year will grow back again and then send messenger to mission. This is example of steganography, where when nobody seeing some person with normal hair will not have the idea that below the hair on the scalp of this person is secretly written message. Another example of steganography, example that many of you who has better or lesser knowledge, familiarity with literature is acrostic. Where see you get likely that some writers like to hide message in text. For example, if you will combine first letter of each chapter or first letter of each sentence in big text, you will read, will be able to read some message in this case. So acrostic is also an example of steganography. But first of all, we and the bigger part of this presentation, in fact, we will speak about cryptography. So what is cryptography? Cryptography, as I said, is the science of encrypting the data, encrypting the data and is closely related to the part in 
effect of information theory called coding theory. Any message that we uh, carrying using our IT means needs to be encoded in one or another way. Every message, all information that we are sending to different communication lines is encoded. encoded. But cryptography uh, still wants to add one additional component to that encoding. It once tries to hide the message, to make the message not at least not easily understandable. Why we need to encrypt the data? The answer is quite obvious. To make the data impossible to uh, uh, read by outsiders. And without cryptography, cryptography tools are uh, used very, very widely now in modern internet work at world. Very important. Provide several information security services such authentication, confidentiality, integrity, non repudiation, etc. Without cryptography, uh, our life is not easy in any case in our internet work at world, but without crypto cryptography, this life would be almost impossible. And it is a very interesting thing that uh, some most advanced ideas in cryptography went step in step uh, with development of network technologies as well. So let yes, me say using slightly different words. So cryptography is the art of protecting transmitted information from some unauthorized interception or information tampering. Cryptography has, of course, other side. Other side is called cryptoanalysis. Cryptoanalysis is the art of breaking secret ciphers and reading information that someone tried to hide, trying to break, trying, trying to understand what someone they try to hide to understand these messages. Uh, cryptography has very, very long history. We will talk about some basic elements of that history, steps in development. But modern cryptography relies on cryptographic keys. Uh, in all modern cryptographic methods, some key is used. Usually, this is a string of text. This text or numbers, uh, some set of numbers for encoding and decoding messages in combination with some cryptographic algorithm. And based on the type of keys, you, keys used, so let us also introduce some terminology, uh, some uh, names, some terms very often used in cryptography. Or cryptography is classified as a symmetric or asymmetric cryptography. Two modern ways to scramble the message is relies on two different approaches. One of them is symmetric, another asymmetric. Let me also introduce several more terms. Is let us talk about the act of communication. The sender's message, we will use these terms in our further presentation. The sender's message, or uh, some uh, sender's message, sometimes is called simply plain text. During cryptography, is transformed into an unreadable form. And this is done using a key. So the resultant text obtained not necessary text in that sense, but this is text composed of letters. It could be a set of digits, of course, and very often it's a simple set of digits. This resultant text obtained is called the cipher, te cipher text. So we have plain text, original text. We have key. This is some set of digits or letters used to encode. To encrypt the data. And finally, after this process, we have ciphertext. Who this process is known as encryption. At the time of receival, the ciphertext is converted back into the plain text using the same key or some algorithm so that it can be read by the receiver. This process of uh, 
back conversion, let's say backward conversion, conversion from ciphertext to plain text is called decryption. <clears throat> decryption. And uh, despite of a wide variety of different encryption methods, we can say that essentially there are three main types of encryption methods. The first type of method is called transposition. In transposition, the order of the letters in the plain text are rearranged in some systematic way. So we have some plain text, and in one or another way, we need to rearrange those letters to make the text at least more difficult to read. In the best case, of course, our goal is to make the text, text impossible to read. Another type of encryption method relies on the idea of substitution. Substitution in substitution, individual letters are replaced by different letters. Also, uh, they are replaced in some systematic way. This way could be quite sophisticated. And key is used, uh, which will describe the order of permutations. The key will describe how we will replace those different letters, those different numbers that are used to form the text the text. Next uh, way, that way, uh, could be called way of the code book. In code book, complete words or in the message are replaced by other words, words that have quite different meanings, quite different meanings. These types, of course, aren't completely different. Uh, more or less, each of them overlaps. And these methods may be used together with each other. Uh, the most popular way now is, so majority of more than methods lies on substitution ciphers. So substitution used to replace some letters, some digits forming plain text, original text with another letters or another digits. In the simplest type uh, of substitution, we will take a permutation of the alphabet and we will we'll substitute it by its image under the permutation. And in this sense, we can see two types of substitution methods, two types of substitutional encryption. One of the way is so-called symmetric encryption. In symmetric encryption, the key used to encrypt the message also, exactly the same key is used to decrypt the message. But uh, it is, and these days, significantly more often used, and never is another way. It's a way called asymmetric encryption. In asymmetric encryption, the key used to decrypt is different from the key used to encrypt the message. In principle, both symmetric and asymmetric Key cryptography provide, in principle, provide data confidentiality. Uh, asymmetric key encryption is sometimes also called public key encryption. Public key encryption, because asymmetric key encryption has two different key used, one of them public key, another private key. Digital signatures is also one of the byproducts of public key cryptography, enable the verification of an uh, of authenticity, integrity, and non-repudiation. It is very, 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 very often, often used and very widely used technique in modern IT systems. How other methods uh, could look like and how in principle we can uh, encrypt our messages? When uh, it is quite widely known example of Transpositional cipher is special quasi language, uh, this quasi language called Pig Latin. Maybe some of you heard of, about such language, but uh, in principle, this is simple form of transposition cipher with a null character, and it acts in next way. 
for words which begin with a single consonant, for example, single consonant, take the consonant of the end of the word and add it to the uh, of the front sorry, of the front of the word and add it to the end of the word. Then add a after the consonant. So the algorithm tells us if we have original word cat, for example, take the consonant from the front, C from the front, add it to the end, we will get the word ATC and add A at the end. So this is a rule. Instead of cat, we will get at K instead of dog ogday. Instead, simply we will get implicit A. Instead of noise, we will get ois nay, etc. For words that begin with double or multiple consonants, take the group of the consonants of the front of the word and add them to the end, adding A again to the end of the word. So if we have, for example, word scratch, we will get using encoding at scratch with the, instead of thick, ik fay, flight, etc., etc. And for the words that begin with a vowel, just add I, A, I at the end is, is, is instead of is, we will get is I with the apple, apple, A, etc. So, for example, if we have original message, hello, we are talking about strange code called Pig Latin. If we will transform it, we will get message that will look in the next way. Hello, hey, away, are hey, all King T, etc., etc. There you can see the link to Pig Latin Translator, you can put any message into this Pig Latin Translator and you will have the encoded message, uh, encoded message, which, which you can, of course, decode using the same translator. But the idea is that looking to this strangely encoded message, you will get the impression that this message is written in some unknown, completely unknown for your language. and that uh, that who will try to read it if someone will not know that this is written in big latin and will know not know the rules will not be able to read it the first known evidence of the use of cryptography in some form was found uh, as an inscription carved around uh, 2000 years even before our era in the main chamber of the tomb of the noble nobleman in ancient Egypt, the scribe used some unusual hieroglyphic symbols here and there in place, instead of place of more ordinary ones. It looks uh, quite to the ideas uh, that I talked about Pig Latin. The purpose was not to hide the message, but perhaps to change its form in a way which would make it appear dignified looking better. Uh, so, despite that this inscription was not a form of secret reading, but incorporated some sort of transformation of the original text and is the oldest known text to do so that we uh, have knowledge about. Uh, but uh, probably most famous, best known example of ancient code is the code known as Caesar's cipher. Uh, fast forwarding to around 100 BC, Julius Caesar was likely you know who Julius Caesar was, was known to use a form of encryption to convey some secret messages to his army generals posted in the some way. The cipher is so called because Roman historians, Suetonius, reported that Julius Caesar used it, and uh, it is likely best documented ancient code that we know about. In original version, in Suetonius description, Suetonius presentation, it encrypts the message by shifting each of the letters down three positions in the alphabet, wrapping back around to A if the sh shift reaches the end. So for example, if we have the word zoo, Z-O-O, -O, and we will use uh, it by shift by three letters in the alphabet, in fact, Zoo will be transformed to the word CRR. If we, if we will have the word FDHVDU and we will need to decrypt it, we will decrypt it to the word Caesar, etc., etc. So simply instead of the original letter in the alphabet, 
uh, uh, write the letter, which in the same alphabet is shifted by some number of the positions. In principle, you can use any shift. There are nothing special about the letter, the digits are at three. It's only famous, the, the digit three, three, because Suetonius reported that Caesar used the number three. In principle, the cipher is super easy to break, but in the era of that era when he lived, or the era of near narrow Cicerone, it was strong likely enough. And one of the famous modern instances of Caesar shift is uh, computer hall, the raw computer in the science fiction story, uh, science fiction novel, 2001, A Space Odyssey. This is the illustration. So if we have in the original, let text letter A, we need to replace it according to the, in the original Caesar case by the letter D. Letter B, we need to change by letter E. Letter X, for example, by letter A. Letter Y with letter B, etc., etc. Instead of our familiar words, we we'll get some initially looking strange set of letters with the words that we can't understand. Uh, this substitution ciphers could be made safer. Uh, it's not difficult to understand that it is very easy to break the code if you have the idea how someone coded the message. Substitution ciphers could be made safer using more letters than in the plain text or using different alphabet. For example, the use of different alphabet, uh, there are known famous example dating back to World War II time when communicated uh, US Army for own communications used the uh, translation of the original English based messages to a really known Navajo language. They hired or about several hundred native Navajo speakers, native American speakers that uh, were able to read and understand that language. And before encoding the message, those interpreters, first of all, translated original English message to message in Navajo language. And after that, they encoded. Of course, they encoded not using Caesar cipher, but in principle, this idea uh, uh, well illustrates how we can make our cipher more difficult to decode. So we need to somehow write additionally original text before encrypting it with another way of encryption. And then it took about 1,500 years to see some meaningful improvement of the previous code. Uh, during the 16th century, Italian uh, researcher, these days we can call this as a researcher, Bellasso, his name was Bellasso, designed a cipher that was supposedly the first cipher which used an encryption key. This call nowadays is called very often visionary cipher, but uh, some science historians tell us that this is done because of mistake, Visionaire invented another cipher, but originally cipher that has been invented by Bellasso was assigned to Visionaire, a, a Frenchman researcher, and, but, and we are today most often calling this code Visionaire cipher. Visionaire e, and the Visionaire cipher was very popular up to the World War I, for example, Visionary Cipher was used by American Confederate Army, by several armies during even World War I, so 100 years ago, ago only. And Visionary Cipher is similar to Caesar Cipher, except that letters aren't shifted by a fixed number of places, but rather by values defined by the key, a collection of letters that represent numbers based on their position in the alphabet. For example, if the key is D-U-H, letters in the plain text are shifted by using the values 3, 20, and 7, because D is 
three letters after A, U is 20 letters after A, and H is seven letters after A. The 327 pattern then repeats until you've encrypted whole plain text. So for example, the word crypto would encrypt to F L L F C N E V using the key D U H. You have, for example, visionary key D O G in this case, in this example, for example, if we have plain text word load, so it will be transformed in the next way, letter. L will be transformed to the O because we need to shift the, this letter by the number of letters how D differs from A. Next letter you see O will be transformed to C because you need to uh, shift next uh, letter by as much uh, positions as O is shifted uh, relatively to A letter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You see. Uh, in principle, visionary cipher is more secure than Caesar cipher, but could also be broken. But it is a very important cipher in the history of cryptography because for the first time, this cipher introduced uh, the idea of encryption key. Encryption key. Comparing this to Caesar cipher, secrecy of the message will depend on the, not on the secrecy of the algorithm itself, but on the secrecy of the key. You need to uh, use, uh, to keep key secret if you don't want that someone will be able to decode it. Uh, how to break the visionary cipher? The first step is to figure out, of course, the key length, but the second step then is to determine the actual key using frequency analysis. And uh, the coding of the visionary cipher related very strongly on the fact that in any language you will take, letters in that language will be distributed unevenly. For example, in English, most frequent letter is E. So if you will find X as the most common symbol in encrypted position, message in some position, which is equal to the key's length, then most likely, plain letter in this position is E, et cetera, et cetera. In this way, you will have the hint how to decode visionary cipher. Uh, it is much more complicated to decrypt short messages. So anyway, you need, uh, but anyway, you need time to decrypt uh, the message. And while in the 19th century, uh, one German famous cryptologist, August Kerhoff, estimated that most wartime messages needs to be kept secret only uh, three to four hours, most often. At maximum, you need to keep secrecy for one or two days. So if you will change keys relatively frequently, you will be able to uh, communicate secretly enough. So we can try to abstract how the ciphers works in this place. Permutation is a function that transforms an item, letter or a group of bits such that each item has a unique inverse. Mode of operation is an algorithm that uses a permutation to process messages of arbitrary size. And in order to be secure, permutation should satisfy in principle three criteria. The permutation should be determined by the key. Different keys should result in different permutations. The permutation should look random. The best key is a completely random sequence of letters. Completely random key can form completely unbreakable code, but it is very difficult to generate completely random key. Uh, and as example, a simple improvement of visionary code is code known as a fish. And in code fish, this code simply uses two keys to encrypt the message, of course, two keys to decrypt. So having original plain text, first you using one key encoding, you are encoding, encrypting this message using first key, and encrypted message, you again encrypting using another key. That makes uh, decryption, cryptoanalysis process significantly more complicated. Classical ciphers are insecure because they are limited to operations you can do in your head on or papers. They lack computational power of computers. And in modern era, when we saw computers arrival, those uh, classical ciphers 
became quite easily, could be easily broken. Uh, the best way to look random is to be random. So as told, I told you one minute about ago, if you will have completely random key generated in completely random way, in principle, you will not be able to perform crypto analysis. But uh, to get such key, you will need to fulfill several requirements. Uh, and the best requirement is to select every permutation randomly in comparison to all other permutations. In principle, in the case of 26 Latin alphabet letters, there are approximately 26 factorial possible permutations. It, uh, it is equal to two about, not exactly, but about to two raised to power 88 permutations. It's a, extremely huge number of possible permutations, simply huge, about the number of atoms in the human body. But from that, uh, theoretically available set of permutations, uh, classical permutations can use only a small fraction of those permutations. Those only those permutations that need simple operations and that have a short description. Secure permutations can't accommodate both of these limitations at the same time together. Classical cipher can't sec be secure unless it comes with a huge key, but encrypting with a huge Key, key is simply impractical, especially in that era, old era of uh, pre-computer, let's say, era. The uh, situation began to change at the beginning with 20th century, when everything became electric. At first, uh, was one engineer, Hebern, who designed a mechanical contraption, which was called the Hebern rotor machine. It uses a single rotor, which uh, generates the secret key, which is embedded in a rotating disk. The key encoded a substitution table for each key press from the keyboard resulted in the output of cipher text. And a further and likely best known example in human history of such machines is a machine developed in Germany just quite soon after World War I. It has been invented by German engineer Arthur Scarbius. He was uh, and uh, especially heavily, this machine was uh, heavily used by German forces during Second World War, and likely were uh, more or less interesting in cryptography theory here yeah, that this machine was called Enigma, Enigma machine. Uh, comparing with the Hebert machine, this machine used three or four or even more rotors. So pressing, uh, pressing those. Uh, keyboard, uh, uh, pressing each uh, key on that keyboard, electromechanical machine keyboard, it forced three, four, or even more rotors uh, to rotate different number of times, and it resulted in, in such a way in different encoding uh, keys. The rotors rotate at different rates as you are typing the keyboard and output appropriate letters of cipher text. And in this case, the key was uh, generated setting appropriately the rotors. But even then, uh, the history, history, from history, you well know likely the fact that Enigma machine cipher was broken first by several Polish mathematicians and later transferred to British cryptographers who worked in special place uh, north of London and uh, history well, very well known that this for the period complicated machine, sophisticated encoding machine was already broken. But, but uh, to broke successfully in that case, you, they needed to get the machine in their hands. They, Still, visionary code and many other codes used till the 1970s were symmetric encoding encryption methods, symmetric 
both to encode and to decode, uh, the people needed to know exactly the same key. So advantages of symmetric encoding is that symmetric crypto system is faster. In symmetric crypto systems, encrypted data may be passed to a link even if the data may be intercepted. Since the data does not convey a key, the chances of the data being decrypted in fact are null. A symmetrical crypto system will use password protection to show the authenticity of the recipient. And only a device which has a secret key will decrypt the message. But at the same time, symmetric key has serious disadvantages. Symmetric crypto systems present a key transfer problem. Before the actual message is to be sent, the key must be passed to the receiving device. And at least two persons, the encrypt, the person who wants to encrypt and the person who wants to decrypt the message must know exactly the same code. And you know very often in some very sensitive situation, if someone is known by two, very often this is known not for only for two, but for very many people. Every electronic means of communication is risky since it is impossible to guarantee that no one can secure channels of communications. So in nowadays, all our modern systems are using so-called asymmetric encryption. The asymmetric encryption requires two keys, a message that is encrypted using public key can only be decrypted using a private key. A private key needs to be known only by a single person. Only one person knows that private key. While using a public key, can also you can decrypt a message that is encrypted using a private key. So a symmetric key has a much better power to ensure the secrecy and security of information transmitted during communication. And all our most popular algorithms, DCA, RCA, Elgamal, elliptic curve techniques, PKCS are among most popular asymmetric key encryption algorithms. And uh, uh, let us talk about general ideas, how this could be implemented and in principle, people who came to this idea came to the general consideration that in principle, this is possible. This is possible even don't uh, talking about any ways of encryption. Let's say that Alice and Bob wants to communicate by post, traditional postal service, but this postal service is controlled by bad if agents. There are some bad if agents who can steal the letter and read it. So Alice puts letter to the chest, locks it with own key and sends this chest with the letter locked inside to the Bob. Bob, of course, can't open the chest, but what Bob in this situation can do? Bob locks the chest with own lock, with own key and sends this chest back to the Alice. Alice. Then Alice unlocks own lock with own key and sends back chest to Bob together with Bob's lock. And getting back this uh, chest, Bob is able to unlock it with own lock. In principle, they communicated, they send, uh, send the messages to both sides and uh, those bad agents weren't able to open the, their chest with the letter inside. Now let's introduce some mathematical formalism. Oh, the hell we need this. So now Alice wants to send plain text P to Bob using the same method. She encrypts it. And instead of original message P, she sends to the Bob message and code it with her code. Uh, and this message let's call EAP, some transmutation. Bob then has own key and Bob encrypts is as EB a, uh, using own key. And the message that Bob, Bob uh, 
generates a Bob encrypts. In fact, is encrypted Alice message is twice encryption. Is message let's call it E B E A P. And in this situation, we need to make some crucial assumption. E A and E B commute if E A E B will result in exactly the same encryption as if we it will be applied to the in the order e b then e a so if we will find the keys that in both ways independently of the order of their application will provide exactly the same encryption we will be able to do next thing now alice has the message e b e, e a p which is equal to e a e b e p and if alice will decrypt it with own code it will be equal to <coughs> the message D A U C E A E B P. It is equal to E B P. Then sends its uh, encrypted message, still encrypted message, back to Bob. And Bob, using own decryption method, can uh, decrypt it. And this will result in original message called P. So at no time during the transaction is any unencrypted message transmitted or exchanged. So always during transmission, uh, all messages are always transmitted. And what is also very important, Alice and Bob uh, are using our keys. And those keys uh, do not need to be interchanged between them. But uh, still uh, risk remains if if will intercept all three messages, if she will add them, she will be able to decode and uh, the techniques, the ideas that we are using in modern encryption algorithm uh, relies on idea of computational or the theory of computational complexity. Computation. So Diffie and Hellman proposed even more radical solution based on the fact that are easy problems to solve and are complicated problems to calculate on this. And in this case, they show that there is, there is some encryption function E and the encryption function D, which must satisfy some relationship. Uh, so in this case, uh, Alice, uh, this, uh, Functions need to satisfy several conditions. Evaluation of D needs to be difficult by evaluation of E needs to be easy. And basing, base, using the ideas of Diffie and Hellman, in 1977, three researchers, um, scholars, academician Ron Rivers, uh, 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 Shamir and Len Adelman proposed the first asymmetric, widely used asymmetric encryption algorithm, still very, very often used, uh, called RCA, RCA. We will now look very briefly into some details of RCA systems. And they show that the, we can behave in the next way. What we need to do, we need to uh, select two large prime numbers, prime numbers, P and Q. Then having those two prime, prime numbers, we need to calculate number Ni, which of course is equal to, as you see, to simple multiple to those two large prime numbers P and Q. For strong and breakable encryption, let Ni be a large number, typical uh, minimal length of 500 of 12 bits, bits, even more bits could be used. Then, you need to find the derived number E. The number E needs to satisfy several conditions. This number E must be greater than one, and at the same time needs to be less than P minus one multiplied by Q minus one. And there must be no common factor for E, and this number, uh, this multiplication of P minus one and Q minus one, except for one. This means that in other words, these two numbers needs to be, these numbers E and this result of multiplications needs to be co-prime numbers. If, if we will find such numbers, 
these numbers will satisfy following following requirements. The pair of numbers, me and e, will form the RCI public key and will be made public. Interestingly, that me is part of the public key, difficult in factorizing a large prime number ensures that attacker cannot find in a finite time the two prime numbers, p and q, used to obtain that number. That's that. Then you can generate the private key, Private key D will be calculated from P, Q, and E. For given E and E, there is a unique number always. Number D is the inverse of E modulo to P minus one multiplied by Q numbers one. If this means that D is the number less than P minus one multiplied by Q minus one such that when multiplied by E, it is equal to one modulo, the condition that you see on screen. This relationship is written mathematically, mathematically as follows in the next way. And uh, once the key pair has been generated, the process of encryption and decryption are relatively straightforward and what is also very important, computationally easy. Interestingly also that this method, RCI method, does not directly operate on strings of bits as in case of symmetric key, and it operates on numbers modulo and hence it is necessary to represent the plain text as a series of numbers less than n. But to do this is not a difficult task. To, you will need to join together your message to a single series of strings, then cut it to uh, some predefined number of bits and transform each set of bits to the decimal number. Then suppose the sender wish to send some text message to someone using public key is me and e using the sender needs to perform this operation. So encoded encrypted each symbol will be equal to C equal to plain text letter uh, in uh, raised by power E multiplied by modulo of N. And if you want to decode the message, you need to perform next operation, operation that is shown at the bottom of this slide. So both encryption and both decryption are uh, computationally simple operations. Simple operations could be easily done uh, using relative computational techniques. And uh, if you properly will select the numbers, numbers uh, you will be able to code, encrypt, and decrypt the message very rapidly, very fast. Uh, and what concerns the those who will want to decrypt the message, because possible numbers of those prime numbers, P, Q, are in principle infinite, they need to check infinite number of the possibilities if they will want to try to break simply code by force. If you will use these numbers, uh, the range of the numbers big enough, you can approximately ev evaluate the speed of the computers, computing power available to those who will likely try to hack your message, to decrypt the message. If you will then make appropriate uh, assumptions about the length of those chunks of information and the size of bits, in principle, you will make the possibility simply to decode, to by brute force method, simply impossible in real time, in, not in real time, but in some sensible time, some sensible time. Uh, some brief explanation how RCI example could work. Let's say two prime numbers, T and 11. You can find such descriptions, such examples. I see that my time is going to the end and don't want to talk about a lot of this example. So strongest data encryption algorithm available to, to, to this day, I 
triple DS, two fish, Blowfish, IS algorithm, IDEA, MD5, HMAC, RCI. These are uh, algorithms which are listed among strongest data encryption algorithms known for us today. Each of them is worth separate analysis, but of course, we do not have enough time to do this. And finally, let me say several words about steganography. The word steganography is derived from two Greek words, stegos, cover, graphia, reading, thus translating to cover at reading. And as I initially told, steganography is a method of hiding secret data by embedding it into an audio with image or text file. These days, steganography is very widely used in uh, images or video files. It is one of the methods, methods employ, to employ, protect secret or sensitive information from malicious attacks. And for example, image steganography refers to the process of hiding data within an image file. The image selected for this purpose is called the cover image. And the image obtained after steganography is called the stego image. How is it done? An image, for example, is represented as table of pixels in case of grayscale images, or let's say we can see this call three tables or three-dimensional matrix in memory, with each entry represent the intensity value of a pixel. And in image steganography, a message is hidden, is embedded into an image by altering the values of some pixels, which are chosen by an encryption algorithm. The recipient of the image must be aware of the same algorithm or to know that in this image or in this video recording, someone wanted to hide the message altering some pixels or altering some frames of information. Detection of the message within the cover image is done using process of stag analysis. This can be done through comparison with the cover image, histogram plotting, noise detection. And while efforts are being invested in developing new algorithms with a greater degree of immunity against such attacks, efforts are also being devoted towards improving some existing algorithms for stag analysis to detect exchanges in secret information. And uh, this one of my last examples, you see two photos of our faculty left in the original photo, while uh, on the photo on the right side, I hide it a message, message uh, which sounds, uh, hello everybody, this uh, photo contains secret message, message about uh, lecture steganography. And if you will look like to both those two messages, likely you will not be aware that the image on the right side uh, all has some secret message hidden within it. Because it is very difficult to see some changes in uh, some pixels, our eyes aren't able to recognize simply that Values of some pixels were altered, especially if they altered it not very much. And this is histograms of both those two images. Images, you see that even histograms are similar, but if you will see those pixels indexes, they slightly differ. Gray, here's the distribution of gray pixels, red pixels, etc. The they are different from the original. But in this case, you need to have the original image to have the idea that someone wanted to hide message in that uh, steganographed image. Okay, likely this ends my presentation. And likely I will get some questions, yeah?